Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, not late but arriving precisely when I mean to, and this is episode 9 of my missed Let's Play. This should be the final episode, so we'll dive right in, but first I just want to say thank you to the outpourings of support I've had whenever I talk about how incredibly ill I am, and... I just want to mention, in case anyone missed the announcement video, that I'm just going to be changing the format of the channel a little bit to, to help accommodate my current illnesses. I can't really commit to my previous pattern of maintaining a single consistent let's play, three episodes a week, boop boop boop, all the way through the entire game. I might need to switch it up a bit, I might need to experiment with other kinds of content, I might need to bounce around between things a little bit. I still want to stick to my three episode a week schedule, but I will be maybe jumping between a few different games. I will definitely be starting to release episodes of a Dominions 5 Let's Play, but I might also be doing a few other games, short games maybe, and possibly experimenting with a little bit of other styles of content. Main thing though is that I want to keep my channel active, I'm going to keep producing stuff, please join me for this wonderful new future. And uh, I say the foreseeable future, I want to go back to my, my old pattern of just working through a single Let's Play, but that, that will depend on how much I recover over the coming weeks. So all of that out of the way, I just want to be very briefly mercenary and say, if you like my stuff, why not give me a like, give me a follow, above all, share my stuff, tell your friends about my channel, or just like tell other people, like, cause you know what? Nothing boosts my ego, like a boost to my audience. So that's all, I really appreciate it all. Thank you, let's actually get on with the show. So when we left off last time, I realized that there were two things that I needed to do. First, I needed to go back and find the other half of the note that we found half of previously. You know, that's pretty tedious and doing it looked like this. You know, I never noticed how nice the view is from this window. So I'll read that note out in a minute when it's relevant, but before then we have to go find the other blue page from the Selenitic Age. As far as I know, you can't carry two pages at the same time. I don't think we could do that in previous in previous worlds, so there's no reason to assume we could do it here, which means I have to go through the whole rigmarole again, and that looked like this. Right, all of that is out of the way, we finally have the final blue page, or actually the penultimate blue page, so we can finally hear what this dipshit has to say for himself. Death. 
He has doubted my brother's clever lies, and so are you dying. Father imprisoned us both. I'm sure from which of us the blow had come. <laughs> I swear to you, what I say is true. Release me. <laughs> you must release me. My brother's a deceitful liar. He deserves a punishment. I only wish vengeance for my dear father. He's murdered. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Recover one additional page to release me from this prison. It's the easiest to find. Go to the bookshelf. It's in this library. From the far right side of the middle shelf, there's a burned book, which is different from the other burned books. This book is filled with patterns. Find pattern 158. Mimic its design on the panel in the fireplace. Doing this will bring you the last blue page. Remember. Only the blue page return quickly to me. And do not touch the green book. It's a clever trap to imprison it. I think that's quiet enough of that. This is an entire family of men who cannot shut the fuck up at any time, apparently. I do find <laughs> I do find Akinar somehow more endearing than Cirrus. Cirrus is endless elitist smom is just less appealing to me than uh, Akinar's obviously deranged mental state. I can empathize very strongly with that, even if he is- even if they are both evil. I just- I like Akinar more. So, we're supposed to go to here and this, and then we're supposed to flip through all of these, which takes a while to find pattern 158, which will reveal to me the two remaining pages. It's interesting- whoa, that's way too far. It's interesting the uh, distortion you see in those books. I can't remember if I mentioned this previously, but I meant to. So I'll just I'll just copy this that down while I while I ramble about this. There is an idea that you can chart pop cultural understandings of distorted messages by how distorted messages are presented in the television show Star Trek. When you watch the 1960s original series, you see messages being distorted by being all wibbly, as if with damaged lenses or damaged film, reflecting the fact that film was the primary visual communication medium at the time. Then you get the TV series in the 90s and the movies in between, and it's replaced by analog TV signal static, visual snow, that kind of thing. And then in later seasons, it gets replaced by digital distortions, pixelation, that kind of thing. So it's interesting the way that depictions of distorted messages in fiction are affected by cultural assumptions of the people making that fiction. When imagining the far future, we don't make their distortions look different to our distortions, we make their distortions look the same as our distortions so that we instinctively understand that it's distorted. I find that particularly amusing with Mist because they've done all of it at the same time. There is flawed lens visual distortion, there is visual snow, there's even like digital pixel um, errors. Anyway, now that I've noted this down, we can freely move on and see what all of the fuss is about. Right, dive in the fireplace, which notably has no signs that it's ever had a fire in it. And we can play with this thing that was an endless torment to me as a kid playing this game. I could not figure out what this was for ever. It is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, hey, look, it left shadows behind where they were. The, the gray tone isn't quite the same. That's interesting. I wonder if that's an error or if that's on purpose. Anyway, uh, it's going to be painful for your ears to sit and listen to me input this code. So we'll jump ahead right now. Right, I'm pretty sure I have this correct, and I hope you all um, understand and appreciate the sacrifice I've made, deafening myself so that you don't have to. That does not seem to have done anything. Um, did I input it wrong? I, I suppose I must have done. Well, I'm going to double check my codebook. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Let's see what happens. Ah, something's happening. So they both begged me to bring their page back and not look in this book at all. But you know what? I'm curious. Let's have a look, see. Also, I want to know who's responsible for all this bullshit I've been through. Who the hell are you? Don't come here to Dunny. Not yet. Um, oh, I have many questions for you, my friend. As you no doubt have for me. Um, where should I begin? Oh, perhaps my story is in order. Um, my name is Atris. Uh, I fear you've met my son, Cyrus and Akinar, in the red and blue books on Mist Island, in my library. My library. Oh, it contains my works, my writings. 
writings. Oh, I wrote many books, many books that linked me to fantastic places. It's an art I learned from my father many years ago. Oh, but the red and blue books, those were different. Mm, I wrote those books, too. I entrap over greedy explorers that might stumble upon my island of mist. But I had no idea my own son. Cyrus and Akinar, we had many journeys together. I gave them free reign to the books. Perhaps it was not wise. I could see the greed growing in them. I had not told them about the red and blue books. Their imaginations went wild. They dreamed of riches and power. So, that seems simple enough. I'm actually going to have to split this into two episodes, it turns out, um, since we have some interesting effects. This game has three bad ends and one good end, and I might as well show them all off to you since this episode's taken way longer than I expected because these men will not be quiet. So, let's come back out of here for now. back out into the main rondel here and uh, prepare for the end game. So the full note that we have found, those two scattered pieces uh, across two different ages, reads Marcus Switch Vault Access Island of Mist. The vault is located in plain view on the Island of Mist and access can be achieved very easily if the simple instructions are followed. First, locate each of the marker switches on the island. Turn every one of these switches to the off position then go to the dock, and as a final step, turn the marker switch there to the off position. So that seems simple enough. You just switch all of the marker switches off, finishing with the one on the dock, and then something will happen. So we may as well run off and go do that. Let's see if we can actually find all eight of the switches. Or is it seven? I still am not clear on that. <laughs> right, there's one over here, which I don't think we ever actually turned on. Oh no, we did, it's fine. So one is here, and then another one will be up in the cabin. That's two. A third over here at the uh, basin. That's three. Then over here we have number four. Number five. Number six is up here. And so that should be number seven, the last one, on the dock. Unless I've miscounted. Did that do something? Did that do anything? It's at times like this when you really understand the cultural impact this game had. When you consider the, the memes that arose out of it, like this one. Which are pretty understandable at times like this. 
As an aside, while I'm wandering around looking to see where this vault has opened, if anywhere, I do find it interesting that games really love to have these narratives about about power and about the abuse of power. Abuse of power is one of the most consistent themes in game narratives, just across the board, really. And yet there's also- oh, aha! Okay. So I guess I have to go turn them all back on and then do this one, because there's eight, because there's one at the power station unnecessarily. That's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but yeah, so game narratives as a whole absolutely love playing with ideas of the abuse of power. But almost always games present as the solution to the abuse of power simply that the right people need to hold the power. There's no conception that power itself might inherently corrupt. There's no conception that perhaps power should at best be distributed between people because you can't trust any one person. There's not even a conception that the people who are best at convincing you they can be trusted with power are often the ones who should be least trusted with it. There's the old Douglas Adams adage that anyone who wants to have political power should under no circumstances be allowed to attain it. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, number eight. Did that, did it do something? Did it work this time? <laughs> I mean, I would assume that a vault would be down here somewhere, but it doesn't look like that's done anything. Oh, this truly is the classic missed experience. Am I doing something wrong? I straight up, I don't, I cannot tell. Let me look at the, let me look at the, the map. Maybe that will illuminate. Does that mean there's one for here that hasn't been done or is that always lit up? Is there a marker switch for the library? I didn't think there was. All right, so <laughs> I caved and looked it up. Apparently I'm doing everything correctly, but the final switch is inverted, the dock switch it's on and off positions are the inverse of everything else. So if I switch all of these to the off position and then toggle it on, will that work? If it doesn't, I'm genuinely stumped. So that should be that they're all off and then this one's toggled off as well. This does not make sense. All right, it looks like actually you turn them all on and then you turn this one off and I just wrote it down in my notes wrong, which is one of the fundamental fallibilities of uh, relying on players to take their own damn notes. That was so much easier than I was making it. So, now that we've discovered this, I'm going to call the end to this episode. Come back next time for the final episode of the actual final episode of this Let's Play. And we will go through the three bad endings and then the good ending, and then we'll be free of this endless torture puzzle conundrum. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe and especially share, and check out my Twitch channel for regular streams. On Twitter you can find announcements and one tweet micro reviews, and if you like what I do and want to support me you can donate on Patreon or Ko-fi. The links are all in the description and thank you so much for watching.